Next thing for you would be to create additional mixes, because what we're doing by adjusting the levels here typically is sending it to our master left, right. The next thing that you're probably going to want to do is if you have wedges or any other kind of monitoring, um, except for personal mixing in this case, in your facilities to be able to create an auxiliary mix. Now, uh, if I wanted to send an aux mix, and this would be, say, for example, to a, a wedge or something like that, if I was using my lav, um, mic here, I would be able to uh, simply choose the aux that I want, and you can see that as I choose the auxes, the colors change, and then I can adjust the, the levels really, really quickly uh, by doing this. So again, choose the aux that you want, and then do this. Now you can imagine if I was creating a mix for a musician, I, if I had to select each one of the channels and do this one by one, it could take me a while to actually create a mix. Um, it could take me longer to be able to adjust something because, you know, every musician asks you, hey, can I get more of this, less of this, more of this, less of this, uh, to be able to find the channel and then find the aux and then adjust the level. So what we have is a function called sends on fader. And there's a button there on your console. And when you choose an aux and then hit the sends on fader button, you'll notice that your faders flip. And these now become the amount of each channel that you're sending into the aux. So now I'm adjusting each one of the levels for aux one. If I go to the bass player, maybe he's on aux two. I hit that. I now have his mix. And then let's go back to Ox1, which was the lead singer in this case. We'll go back. She says, I need more me. I just pull her back up, and then I go back, and now I'm mixing front of house again. So very fast to be able to move around and do your mixes. If you're doing a matrix mix for broadcast or anything like that, you simply hold the two uh, auxes together, hit that, and that will uh, bring you into the matrix ends instead. So again, one tap for your auxes, two taps for your matrices. Very, very easy uh, to move around. Next, let's move over to effects really, really quickly. And uh, I'm going to pull up the effects. And we have six stereo effects processors that are in here. And again, the effects uh, button is right underneath the screen on the right-hand side, if you want to pull that up. And typically, uh, most people are going to use a reverb and a delay. And that's what is set up here in, um, in the sanctuary as effects that they use. So we have that uh, selected. If you want to change the effect that's on any one of the effect sends, simply put the little red box by using the uh, cursor's uh, movement over here around the name of the effect, hit the Enter button, and then that will allow you to move through all of the different effects. Now, I'm not going to change it here so that uh, Sunny doesn't have any challenges, or uh, Sunny and uh, Terry, excuse me, don't have any challenges uh, when we um, leave their system back to them. Uh, but you can see here that we have a delay and we have a stereo reverb. Now, reverb typically, what we would do is we would use an aux send to be able to feed the reverb so we can add as much as we want of each channel into that reverb bus. So to select your insert source, and again, you're following the signal path of the audio from the left-hand side, and you're going out to the right-hand side. So if I go to my insert source and I change this, you can see that I could insert that reverb directly on a channel, or I could use the aux out. So if I go to the aux out, you can see that it's set for aux uh, 16 here. And I'm just going to close that. And it's going to go through, and it's going to be returned on effects uh, return 6 left and right, which is right here. And again, I could change this destination here. Um, you can see that they have assigned uh, 47 and 48 to be effects um, 6 uh, return right there. So to give an example of how this works, for the auxes, let's pull up, I'm going to pull up the, uh, the vocal for the singer, uh, Bethany, and uh, let me just unmute her. And then the effects return for reverb, again, on my user layer, is set up here. And I'm just going to select her channel. OK, so now she's singing, and the, it's very dry. So if I want to add some reverb, I simply choose aux 16, which is feeding the reverb. And then we have delay here as well. <laughs> but
but just by adding into aux 15 and aux 16, you can bring that uh, in there. And again, we'll go to the effects. And aux 15 was feeding the delay. Aux 16 was feeding the reverb. And we returned it on there. So pretty straightforward to be able to bring that in. And then some other things that we've added in here. And this is a new feature that's part of the version 1.5 update. We have a number of effects that are uh, Roland and Boss classics. So if any of you are familiar with the CE1, which is famous uh, Boss chorus pedal, the DD3, the DM3, those are all built in as uh, plugins, if you will, that you can access. And I'm just going to uh, close this here and go to the edit screen and show you that as I pull this up, it looks just like the Boss uh, Chorus Ensemble. So typically, you would add this maybe to an acoustic guitar. And uh, let me actually do that, uh, add it to the, the acoustic guitar here. And we have the ability. Uh, it's already patched to the guitar that's here. And that is guitar number one. So this is the guitar dry. Getting a little extreme with it, so you can hear it. Reduce the vibrato, bring up some chorus. So again, lots and lots of different effects, and you can use those uh, just like seasoning when you're cooking. Add as much uh, to taste as you like. Um, but one of the great advantages of having the R1000 is that I could sit here as long as I wanted to and try out each different effect, try out all the settings. I wouldn't need to have the guitar player come in and sit down. Hey, let's, go, let's work on your effect for six hours Monday night. He's not really going to be into that. So the R1000, I could play it in context with the song. Then I could bring it up in the mix, hear how that chorus fits in with the rest of the instruments and things like that as well. It's, it's really, really a powerful tool, and having it built in, uh, in the system is a, is a really wonderful thing. So those are some of the effects. We also have um, 12 uh, dedicated graphic EQs for those of you that have to uh, adjust for uh, the front of house, though typically your integrator is going to come in, set those EQs, lock those down uh, so that your house sounds uh, properly EQed every time. But for wedges and things to fight feedback, you do have the ability um, uh, to use the 31 band graphics. And they're really fun to use uh, and very easy as well. If you we go into the edit screen here, we can put the frequencies of the EQs onto the faders. Okay, So just by hitting the, the on fader button, I'm now adjusting how much of each EQ. And these faders, as you can see, are touch sensitive. So as I grab them, the red uh, box moves to that particular frequency. So I know that this is 1K. I can uh, increase or decrease that uh, very, very easily uh, by doing that. Then if I want to flatten that frequency, I simply hit the mute buttons of the channels, and that resets that particular frequency. If I have a couple of wedges that I'm always fighting for feedback, and I want to get to those really quickly, rather than do this, effects, find the correct graphic EQ, then go into the edit section, I can just have that set to one of the buttons. So shift and button assign. Let's go into enter here. And we're going to go into the effects. There we go. And we're going to edit the graphic EQ. And let's choose number 7. And we'll say Enter and say OK. And now that's assigned. So if I hit 5, right away I'm into graphic EQ 7. So if that's the guy that has the problem wedge all the time, um, even if you're in any other function of the console, I'm editing channel two. Oh, I got feedback on wedge number one. Bang, grab the frequency that you need to, and you can adjust it. And if we go and uh, change the assignment that's on here, close this, uh, effects and graphic EQ seven. And let's just insert it on, say, typically an aux. Let's put mains, go back to some music. Okay, 
Can you guys see the, uh, the RTA, the real-time analyzer? So with this RTA, you'd be able to see what is happening to that wedge. And if you had a feedback spike somewhere, you would see very quickly where that would exist in the frequency range, because it would just appear really, really big. So you could grab the faders in that section and just pull those down uh, to very quickly uh, get rid of that feedback um, from your EQ that way. So that's a way to use it um, in there. And again, very quick to be able to access when you uh, assign it to a user button.